archaeology breakthrough, researchers discover the uh, source of King Solomon's wealth. Well, we know that he had a lot of contributes, uh, pay, uh, uh, tributes played by his uh, allies and his uh, conquered uh, areas, territories, but uh, the copper in the area, especially the island of Cyprus, was used to make bronze. These are ancient water spouts made of copper, as you can see. They, a copper, the bronze was of course needed for swords, for armor, for building supplies, even uh, everyday supplies. But this was one of his sources of wealth. Archaeologists believe they uncovered the source of the legendary wealth of King Solomon deep in Israel's Timna Desert, near the Dead Sea, the region that en encompasses Israel, Jordan, Palestine, and Egypt, rich in ancient history. Much of Israel's deserts have offered archaeologists scores of artifacts from hundreds as well as thousands of years ago. Anywhere you dig in Israel, you're going to find something. Perhaps the most famous discovery came when shepherds happened upon the series of manuscripts in jars in the Qumran Valley of the Dead Sea in mid-20th century. They were later called the Dead Sea Scrolls, the parchments containing literature dated as early as the 8th century BC. And further south from that, in the Israeli desert, lies the Timna Valley, where archaeologists began excavating the ancient site in 1964. Since then, researchers have discovered a network of mines believed to have been worked by slaves under King Solomon about 1000 BC, explored during Smithsonian Channel Secrets, King Solomon's Mines. The documentary narrator noted that archaeologists might have discovered the source of King Solomon's legendary wealth. Well, let's remember Cyprus, meaning Kypros. The word Kypros means copper. Cyprus is full of copper. And not far from that is, of course, Greece. But we have copper that was extracted from the Great Lakes region. Geologists say that uh, it could have been the uh, Europeans of the Mediterranean area that went and uh, mined copper from the Great Lakes region, taking most of it away. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Professor Erich Ben Yosef from Tel Aviv University determined that production at this site was booming at the time of Solomon's rule 3,000 years ago. The mines, though, are filled not with gold or silver, but with copper. Evidence is scattered all across the site for mass copper production. Handling a piece of black rock, Professor Ben Yosef said, all of the black material is slag. It's waste from the furnaces to clean the copper, of course. It's very important evidence from the ancient copper production in Timna. While copper is today a common commodity, in ancient times it was one of the most sought after metals on earth, Professor Ben Yosef said copper at this particular time in history was the most important economic resource. It was the most lucrative industry. Dr. Mohammed Najjar from Friends of Archaeology of Jordan explained that the metal back then is akin to crude oil today. He said because you cannot do without oil, and at that time you couldn't do without copper, which was of course uh, used for making bronze, brass, bronze, swords, and armor, and other things, chariots, whatever. Copper was at the heart of a radical turning point in human history. For the first time, people were extracting metals from rock, turning them into tools and weapons. Dr. Najjar described the moment as a quantum leap as humans started to produce their own materials. He studied ancient copper processes and showed the document, the documentary how Solomon's men would have worked the natural copper found in the caves. Through a process called smelting, once mined, the metal was separated from its natural ore in the rock. The ore had to be heated to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit in order to achieve such a temperature. The workers had to continuously blow on the flames through a pipe. And that would make take many hours to get the sought after uh, temperature to smelt the, the commodity copper in its pure form. 
So this is obviously a turning point, copper using for brass and bronze. This is by Joel Day of Express UK. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.